when you have a lot of IAPs, that means you get more buying from the big studios, which means that your eCPM goes up. So if I adjust the eCPM levels to, let's say, 42 in the States and 18 worldwide, which probably makes some more sense, I think this game makes about $210,000 a day currently in ad revenue, which means that that is about 75 to 80% of this game's revenue. This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers, sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Let's fucking go, yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is, again, a very special episode. Maybe we should start actually recording some episodes where we are just uh, three of us. But no, like, this is great. So why are you smiling? I mean, yes, I lost my voice. What's the matter? So what? What's the matter? <laughs> cat, cat got your tongue? What's wrong? <laughs> I just lost my voice. It's fine. Little, little teenager, Maven. Yeah, little teenager, yeah, yeah. Mate. You know, I know, I know, I know. I'm growing up, finally. I'm growing up. <laughs> Let's start. My name is Matej Lancharic. I'm Felix Proverk. <laughs> I'm Jakub Remier. And we are your hosts for today. And we have a very special... <laughs> I can, I can do, I can do ASMR. I can, I can just whisper all the, all the fucking time. It's <laughs> really fine as well, right? Okay, jokes aside. Uh, we're talking about we are warriors, and we have some very special guest Sam from Westmore. Fuck, this is this going to be uh, You know what, Maciej? Why don't you sit this one out? It's just you know, take a little rain check. I'll take it from here, my little okay, teenage please. friend. <laughs> Today we have a very special episode. We have one of the co-founders from Westmore who's joining us to actually talk about their latest hybrid casual hit, We Are Warriors. And for those of you who are just tuning Thank in for the first Felix. time, <laughs> you're in the okay. isolation booth, Mate. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, uh, we have a special two and a half gamers definition of what we define as a hybrid casual title, which is what, Remo? Yeah, which is that we look at stuff that's grossing more than 33k ip dollars a day which kind of because otherwise we need to look at pretty much everything which is around 1 million a month in ip dollars only not counting the ad revenue because we don't see the ad revenue in the tools so that's our kind of cutoff point where we kind of oh like we should look at this thing because like it's getting big because of course this is assuming that the revenue is much higher than 1 million a month uh, altogether because yeah, okay, you, okay, you two, you two, you suck at hosting. So please, uh, Sam, can you give us a, a proper intro about yourself and the company you actually co-founded? Maybe they, maybe that would be a better start. <laughs> Hello, uh, sure, a special yeah. guest. <laughs> you retards. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Sam. I'm one of the co-founders at Lesmo. I've been in the industry, mobile games industry, for about like just over five years. Um, I started my career working at Colibri Games on Idol Minor Tycoon. Nice. That's where I met Jerry and Josh, uh, our co-founders. Um, and then a year later, Josh and I left for Popcore to join the Hyper Casual Rush. We had a lot of success there. Uh, built and prototyped a lot of Hyper Casual games. So we sort of picked up the skill of prototyping uh, a lot of games. And then we thought, uh, hey, we could probably do this ourselves. So we came together and we called up Jerry as well, and he was available. And then we uh, co-founded Lesmo, and then we started prototyping a bunch. And, and yeah, that's how Adventure and We Are Warriors happens. And now we're 17, fully remote. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So th this company was founded in Berlin, right? Or my... Uh, so the uh, it's headquartered in Germany in, in Jerry's... Uh, family's house <laughs> and so uh, but we never bothered really to to you know update that so and, and <laughs> it, it, at the time it was covid so we wanted Fair an enough. office but but remote was working and yeah uh, and i just just that's how Easy. it all happened yeah are the just uh, a your question out of curiosity are the Heinzel twins involved because are brothers involved because uh you know any company that gets founded close on, around berlin has like a little <laughs> help from them or like a little bit of them in it like uh popcorn is an investor yeah okay yeah, oh nice okay yeah. easy i mean yeah. okay fair enough 
<laughs> so we are talking about VR Warriors. Jakub, or who wants to start, or or maybe, maybe Sam, how did you actually come up with this uh, kind of idea? Because it's great. I mean, it's hard as fuck. <laughs> it's really hard, really, really hard. But like, how did you find this idea? It's very different from less, uh, from adventure. Um, so, so, I mean, a lot of people think that uh, we cloned it from Age of War. Uh, there was definitely a lot of inspiration. But actually, fun fact, uh, it wasn't uh, inspired by Age of War. The core gameplay at least wasn't. Uh, the core gameplay was mainly inspired by the tower. I'm not sure if you guys played that. But this loop, Which basically, one? the tower. The tower, okay. Mm-mm. Yeah. So you basically press battle and then you try and beat this thing and then and then you lose and then you you upgrade and then you press battle again and then you and then basically this loop right and it was mainly inspired by that but the only thing that was uh that the idea uh, was lacking was sort of this content treadmill and so we left it on pause because the adventure happened and then later on uh uh you know we were playing age of war and we were like oh that would actually be the perfect content treadmill for this game and then that's that's basically how it happened but but a lot of people ask us ask us this uh i think one key difference that we do when we prototype games we don't do any market research like zero market research perfect <laughs> so <laughs> that, that that might be the reason why it it seems so different to adventure because we don't mm. let ourselves be inspired too much because we really believe in innovative moment to moment gameplay we believe in fresh mechanics uh to, to, to build mega hits in, in today's nice. environment. Are you playing mm-hmm. the game, Jakub? Yeah, <laughs> so playing the game. In the meantime, yeah, okay. So. Good. But I, I love this game because it's an absolute ad monetization Bismarck, like a juggernaut. <laughs> like, it's a beast. But I think, Remo, maybe you could start by just going through the game design yeah. stuff. Yeah, and I then... can... Sam, I can go if, he ha- if he talks shit at any time, just say bullshit. Yeah, just say bullshit. Yeah, feel free to. Or like, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, yes or no, with, or no uh, comment. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it usual. happened with, uh, with Pocket Champs. Yeah, yeah, I got called out. was talking about something. I was like, oh, man, that's bullshit. So. Yeah, uh, already, like, I, I need to kind of correct my assumption here because I thought this was kind of coming from adventure because the thing that I wanted to start with is that, of course, this is a second game for the company, which is, like, the hardest one, I would say, after the first hit. So kudos to that. And uh, I thought that like some of the principles of the game are actually coming from adventure because adventure, which is briefly the description would be like a cooking game on an idle simulation where, again, the game is built on this premise of resetting the progression and starting from scratch in like a bigger kitchen, let's say. So I thought this kind of a premise was translated from uh, to the VR Warriors game, not the other way around. So like, yeah, that's it. I'm wrong right there. <laughs> there you go. Um, regarding the game itself, uh, I would classify it as some kind of a strategy-based auto-battle with idle RPG elements, because in the end, like if you just like very, very simplify, this is kind of close to something like Clash Royale. Just, again, very, very simplified, because, again, we have the, the energy, we are spawning the units, but we are not choosing the lanes. We are just, like, you know, throwing them into the, into the battle, and they're kind of fighting themselves. So, again, very kind of simplified strategy game. Uh, the core where units are kind of auto-battling is, again, as I said, simplified, but still it takes a little bit of tactic. For instance, I'm currently stuck here yeah. at end you of time. You again. No, no, You're not I'm watching not... any ads, man. That's what you um, need to do. <laughs> Just wait a second. I'm <laughs> at the end of timeline two. Any one of you are man. further? I'm at timeline two, a samurai age, so you're actually further than me. Yeah, see, Obviously. there you go. Yeah. Anyway. Uh... You're playing again. You're playing on the emulator. Again. <laughs> Again, so what? <laughs> so what? So cheating. The the, the game kind of goes through this loop of like different ages and eras where these kind of battles goes in. And if I understood correctly, the balance gets harder and harder as as you go. Like my best tactic, honestly, for like going through the ages was not really caring about unit upgrades and stuff that much, rather than like pick up a pace of farming currency fast enough to evolve into second age yeah, because yeah, then yeah. When, when the ages meet like yeah it's kind of a civilization yeah, battle yeah, where yeah. The, the more advanced technological age just always steamrolls over the like the current age and then you can continue it took, so. me, it took me a while if uh, like when i understood like okay well i need to evolve to a different era just to steamroll over uh, my opponent actually yeah, yeah but then like for instance here the game uh, the 
let's say not the tower defense but like the the scripted gameplay a little bit uh where the units are actually coming in waves and you see yeah. these waves like this one which like yeah how did i deal with yeah it? you're Honestly. fucked man yeah you can't beat that <laughs> so yeah at some point and this is really hard because i cannot really evolve here in, in this point of the game like i just need to beat those like there's no other way to kind of continue into into the other timeline so it takes a little bit of skill not just like you know upgrading stuff and like you need to time these things and pretty much create some kind of a traffic jam of units to accumulate enough power to steamroll into the base and like yeah i know sam is smiling i guess <laughs> so that's, that's what people are kind of doing doing these days but yeah it's, it's very hard and in the end is a, a lot of skill based involved at, at like the transitions between the ages uh but enough of the core gameplay regarding the progression uh, there's actually a little bit of like idle progression uh, sprinkled there from games like Golden Goblins or Adventure Communist, where we have these cards that are put behind gacha and the cards are pretty much being evolved by themselves. You don't really use even soft currency to upgrade those, just no. like shards of the cards, typical Clash Royale shard gacha is there. They upgrade and they just give you two vectors. One is unit health and mm. unit damage. Vectors and systems. Two yeah, vectors. Exactly. <laughs> and and yeah. that's it. Which again increases your power in your main battle all around and like goes with you throughout the era. Like this is the permanent part that's kinda is the thing that's driving your progression because everything else, like if I move here, it resets. It resets. So again, if I move into another era or timeline whatever i again need to buy the second unit the third unit upgrade food production base health i think is uh permanent throughout the timeline but again resets back at the time start of the timeline so that's there on the other hand there's this kind of dungeons uh secondary game mode that unlocks at some point where if i understand correctly these are basically puzzles because you're not upgrading anything there's a fixed number of enemies going against you and you just need to somehow kind of solve the puzzle and pick the right units at the right time with limited budget that the game gives you and that's it oh, oh yeah well, no i wouldn't say i wouldn't say puzzles i would i would just say i would say it's just the damage check right so yeah yeah, it, yeah. But, but is this affected by your uh, like card progression cards or? yeah ah, okay so it's a damage check okay okay definitely yeah. another puzzle because i thought like yeah because there's like no upgrading involved here that, that like maybe i would need to kind of do some kind of thing but yeah you're right so this is a damage check then <laughs> which unlocks at the start of timeline two yeah which i cannot just go around 1.8 failing miserably there and then there's i guess is another version of it at timeline 7 and timeline 15 that that's mm -hmm. my guess here and then um what are, are they actually Sam? like I i'm so far away like where are the other two timeline uh dungeons so timeline seven timeline seven is like stories uh where we Ooh. where we sort of uh, yeah for example the, the battle of rome or or That's spartan but mm. 300 versus a million or uh, cops cops <clears throat> versus gangsters um and they give you red potions for the rune tree and then timeline 15 is against bosses like godzilla and this like spider monster and Mm. a yeti and they give but, you golden keys that give you items for your hero that you unlock later godzilla ah. with an s though right so so the if i, if I understand <laughs> correctly the features you're talking about are unlocked here in timeline 3 7 15 that we just yep. cannot yes. be here yeah, it's yep. just, I, I can't even imagine how far it is in like player time man yeah there. exactly like uh yeah i've been playing this game very feverishly i would say throughout last week and just made it at the end of the timeline too which uh yeah is, isn't that far to begin with but yeah it seems like the progression is very very steep and the uh, interesting part for me is that it's uh yeah, ludicrously hard to begin it's with from the start is yeah. no it's so like slow pacing in the start like it's uh, yeah, yeah it takes it, forever it's like it, it like reminds me of the chinese game that was trending on wechat that we had here before the sheep a sheep game which was like a tile matching game something that the first level was so hard that like whole wechat was talking about it. this was also driving its virality so that's my guess this is this has something to do with the same here that like it's so hard that like you know like the flappy bird thing like it was so hard that people were playing because it's so hard so that that's my Let guess. Him is that Remo. I want to hear. I want to hear Remo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, we played this one game once. I don't know what it was called, but it, it was super hard to progress. And but I think that the main reason here is that that it. I think the novelty sort of wears off really quickly in terms of seeing the new eras, right? So we want mm -hmm. to sort of 
squeeze that novelty as much as possible. Because by the time you get to sort of like timeline three and timeline four, you don't really start, you don't really see errors anymore. And you start mm. to start to just want to sort of like get higher damage numbers and you realize that it's all of a reskin. So we want to sort of like lengthen that first part of uh, the treadmill as much as possible. But yeah, look, I mean, we need to run A-B tests. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, no. maybe making it faster is actually better. Yeah, I, I I actually started playing this game in December, but I was it was so hard. I was like, "Fuck, I can't play this game." I was like, <laughs> and then then we were we we started having this discussion about the, us being on the PGC panel, and so I picked it up again. I was like, "Oh fuck, it's still super hard." <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. and then I was like, I'm, "Oh my god, it's growing so fast. I need to I need to push myself. I really need to." And I started playing, and it's like, "Oh my god, it's still hard." But now I know like how I actually play this game. <laughs> it's like now I know after two months. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's actually like very hard. But again, don't get me wrong. My guess is that this is one of the things that that's yeah doesn't people. mean that's that's yeah. wrong. Doesn't yeah, doesn't mean that's bad, wrong. Yeah. It's just like very specific or unique. Because again, same principle with that same game that we were talking about, cheaper sheep game. Like it was like having ludicrously high numbers in China because everybody was talking about it. And my guess is that. Like I've seen like three copies already, which is like exactly the same game on the stores, like with a guy <laughs> running on the tri- triceratops or whatever was the dinosaur. <laughs> same color, same image, something, something. So I guess people are kind of jumping on it, as I've seen like yeah. a lot of clones of adventure when when you scale that one. So I guess that that's expected. But regarding the like overall state of the game, like it seems even like to my point, seems very simplistic what it is. How, how it is designed in order what it already achieved because even if i go to the store it's literally very rudimentary so there's like two ads per day that you can get like two free rolls on the gacha basically here yeah. then there's just basic anchored prices for the gems and that's it there's nothing really to it you can even buy soft currency if i understand correctly in these kind of a uh, loops of eras so the only way to kind of buy something and the overall IP revenue of the game is just driven by people purchasing the anchor prices for the gem roll currency and then they throw it all into the gacha. Or correct well, there me is, if I'm wrong here. There is a there is the one point five X game speed. I don't know which version this is, but I don't know why you can't see it. But oh, you mean like I'm, I'm in an yeah. unfortunate day test. Yeah, thank you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think you're just not updated. You haven't updated the game, but you can ah, get the, okay, okay. the okay, 1.5x okay. uh, game speed. You can purchase that because you usually watch an ad to get that for a few minutes, and then mm-hmm. you purchase mm-hmm. that, and that's a permanent purchase. And then once the when the events are running, uh, there are also event offers. Mm. Uh, I haven't seen any events. Portions. Like, yeah, well, wh- when are the events running? Yeah, where are so, they running? So again, if you when you if you're updated, it should tell you that you unlock it on timeline three. I'm not sure which version you're on. Okay. okay. If, if you go if you go on settings and then click write us, it should tell tell you. It should open and then it should tell you in your second screen. If yeah, it opens maybe because he's cheating. on an emulator. That's fine. Exactly. I don't care about him. <laughs> right, it should it should work on PC, but if it doesn't, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, but, but again, like <laughs> what I'm trying to say that it, it's amazing with what the game achieved already with such an like simplistic feature set in a way that like just like even though like, okay, let's assume that like events are also driving the the revenue as they should because I see kind of spiky revenue in the chart. So I guess they are driving the revenue spike. And yeah, you should, you should just update the, the game. I updated the game and I see game speed forever, 10, 10 euros. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that in the meantime, hopefully. I mean, it's true. It is it is only that offer. Look, I mean, uh, in the past, so we, we at Lesmo, we never like to do things because everybody else is doing them. Mm-hmm. We only do things when we truly understand why. So mm-hmm. we've never understood... Uh, bombarding the player with a lot of offers or a lot of mm-hmm. different ways to purchase the same thing. We tried an A-B test once on Adventure. We didn't see an uplift. And so we just never really visited again. And, and we truly mm-hmm. believe in the whole concept of 80-20. We believe that 80% of what drives the results of, of, of We Are Warriors comes from 20% of its design. Mm-hmm. We truly believe this. So so that's mainly why you don't see that many offers. But, mm. but I'm not saying that this is the correct way of doing it, but uh, no, no, no. we want to first understand truly. Completely yeah. valid opinion. No, because obviously we are all not always right. You just like 
kind of thinking about like different things and angles about like okay yeah. why is this working or not but by the way like those if you go back <laughs> Jakub those two yeah <laughs> yeah it's like what I just like accidentally saw like I can actually <laughs> switch be- between eras I was like what <laughs> I didn't even see that in there and until this morning I was like okay this is interesting. Yeah, yeah you can but... well now I know because there's a yeah, there's a timeline that you can even go check. Yeah, yeah. How many people built this game, and how long did it take? Uh, so the initial prototype was two people, and then we built it with three people. That, so so two people took two weeks for the initial release, and then three people oh took us about four or five months to get to the state, and then we launched. Four or five months. Okay. 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 So okay. we are we are approaching that hybrid kind of a production cycle here yeah no Rima, can you show the revenue as well uh yeah yeah maybe let, i can let, do let, yeah. Let, let, let me do that um yeah so regarding the numbers that we see again you can say what yeah, you think we need to, is... yeah we need to uh, kind of uh, use our sadness multiplier for sure yeah it's, it's quite new and uh and yeah. uh, Sam is smiling all the fucking time. So there is something. He's smiling because it's probably <laughs> yeah. off. He's like, "Man, oh, I need to 2x so... that, and it's going to be closer." So that smile says it all, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So again, the spikes here, as I was telling, uh, and what Sam was mentioning, those are probably the events that are driving yeah. the revenue spikes here. Uh, we see something in the vicinity of like. 45k a day on average let's say spike in purchases only yeah in yeah. purchases only regarding downloads is of course a different story something like like yesterday this says 200k downloads a day but again sadness multipliers with these well, the, kind the downloads of... usually are correct yeah downloads are more correct definitely uh but like yeah so pretty much the trend line is obvious here like you can yeah. see that it's it's scaling still higher and uh, revenue on IAP side is kind of, I would say, stable or stabilized. But again, we don't see the ad and revenue here. So you should, you should go to retention right away because yeah, well, there are some like sorry. wild numbers. It says like day one is like 55%. And it's usually here, it's what, overestimated? In Central yeah. Tower? In Central oh, Tower, yes. I think in all, all platforms, it's a little bit overestimated. But even like this, like 58 on day one, it's, it's quite... So 68, so, 58% yes. day one, 15% day seven, 5% day 30, and 5% day 60. And then there's day, <laughs> yeah, there's the thing like day 90 is like 4.8 or something. Yeah, for okay. 4.5. So pretty much whoever right? stays in day 30 uh, stays forever. <laughs> it's like a flat line. Yeah, pretty much. I, I don't think the cohort there is, is, is big enough, right? We started scaling in December. so we That's don't true, yeah. Children. That's true, yeah. but still... But, <clears throat> but it's yeah, it's not that far off actually. Nice. It's a bit, day one is a bit overestimated, but it's not that mm. far off. Man, that's that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's let's uh, <laughs> let's go to let's go to admon because uh, like yeah, this yeah, is you an can't, admon yeah, game. Like just, yeah, yeah. Bismarck, yeah. like I said. <laughs> So I started playing this game on the way to Games Forum. What is that? Two weeks ago now, and I was playing it for the first time without ads, like on airplane mode. Mm. And I was just sitting there for two hours on the plane. I'm like, a stupid, a fucking game. Like you yeah. can't do anything. No, yeah, it's just... like the worst game ever. <laughs> then I turned off flight mode, and wow, it's an ad revenue juggernaut. Because, like, ladies and gentlemen, just... this game makes at least six digits per day in ad revenue. There's no way it makes less. How much though? Uh, let's go down and uh, yeah. <laughs> have a look well, later. The Excel but, sheet. The Excel yeah, Excel sheet. sheet. But uh, so we've covered all hybrid casual, like hybrid casual games on this podcast that have hit Jakob's famous threshold. And basically, there's hopefully all. Yeah, there's two main <laughs> design threshold. schools for uh, for ad placement design in hybrid casual. There's like Voodoo and say, say Games method, which is banners, interstitials, and rewarded. And also like Alien Invasion Crazy Labs, which uses only rewarded ads. And now We Are Warriors also only shows rewarded ads. In We Are Warriors, there are these are the ad placements. So two uh, daily rewarded can ad sh- placements can, for yeah, gem. Can you show that? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah I can. Ideally, uh, on the core loop in the main play in the main core gameplay, uh, there is a 1.5x time for five minutes for a rewarded ad. 
Uh, there's two. Uh, <laughs> there's no point, Jakob's creature. He hasn't updated his game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll get to the other. Shame. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> like half of the stuff Felix is, is mentioning. Yeah, you're even talking. On yeah, it's not there. <laughs> no, oh game designers God. never appreciate ad revenue, man. Like they always <laughs> underestimate it. But yeah. <laughs> All right. There's a there's a zombie rush in the dungeon, uh, which is unlocked after a timeline one. So you can do two free tries a day, and then two more with rewarded ads and then after every battle you have double coins yes and then which is probably the best performing one is at the start of the battle oh. every day with a two cap two rewarded limit cap is meat basically and that's yeah. like what's basically used i guess to progress people because with this you can actually beat the other character um. so this must have like really like Really good. You have better chance. You have better yeah. chance. No. Really, like for, for me, the best one is like here in the shop where you can have two gacha pools. Yeah, let's ask Sam. Yeah. What's okay. the best performing rewarded ad placement here out of these ones? I think it's definitely that f uh, free meat, right? I have absolutely no idea. That's perfect answer. <laughs> yes. There you go. God knows. I don't know. <laughs> But like, slapped a bunch of rewarded videos where we would want a reward and then yeah. <laughs> release, let's release it and see what happens is, nice. there, is there any reasoning why you had a, as a cap for two per day though because that's the one that struck out to me is the, the most just, odd one I would say because yeah, normal piece, idle piece of, games piece of Felix <laughs> yeah, would uh, usually try to stack that one as much as possible but yeah well the, 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 initial, the initial thought is that we didn't want uh, watching ads to be the main strategy to progress in the game so we try to put as many caps as possible and then and then yeah and then hopefully the in-app purchases uh, kicks in but but yeah we i know that the 2x at the end of each battle Man, is this... capped yeah we yeah. want to cap that as well we're thinking about capping that but yeah that's 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 the main reason because if you if you can watch if you can watch an ad for meat every battle then you're yeah. gonna watch an ad every single battle yeah and, that's true and then you might turn you, you might make more money in the beginning but then you might turn quicker yeah, yeah. So the, the cap thinking. is used basically but yeah, to push yeah so you basically the cap is used to push people to make an iap basically no just stay with the game a little bit longer because then yeah. like you have uh, different like multiple sessions during the day and then you want to come back next day because then you have you have new two like uh placements yeah like keep in mind that this this is more like hybrid paradigm here like even though the game definitely doesn't make like i i think like yeah, it's not 50, 50. That, yeah. No, not even forty percent of overall daily revenue in IPs. That's my guess. Like, it's not even hitting that. It's still way kind off, of, mate. Way yeah. off. <laughs> it's still the philosophy that like you want to have long-term progression. That's why the day ninety is five percent. So you don't really want to overspam people with that. Especially ma make them make them feel that they're mandatory. That that's the big difference. Yeah. That you shouldn't make them feel that they're mandatory. Yeah. But by the way, just a disclaimer, like. So Jakob did some consultant consultancy thing for us for Adventure a few a few months ago. We basically took all of his advice and applied it to We Are Warriors. Nice. So we Are Warriors sucks. <laughs> yeah, you know who to blame, right? You know, you know who to blame. <laughs> so, but if it works, if it's nice, which it's yeah. looking like yeah. it has some potential long term, then yeah, yeah, Jakob, Jakob, Jakob is your guy. So, nice. so, so if you so if Jakob roasts the game, you you you're roasting yourself. Yeah, no, like yeah, yeah, Sam, yeah, Sam told me that before the PGC or uh, discussion or afterwards, like hey, you know, like we worked with Jakob and like we kind of like took all this advice, <laughs> but don't tell him. Yeah. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, just wondering, like, when you built the game, did you decide just to use rewarded only, uh, or did you actually think about interstitials and banners as well, or were you just, no, we're going to do the alien invasion way? I mean, the end game is to be in our purchases only yeah. for less more. So we want to sort of like slowly get there. Mm. But yeah, I mean, the the main thinking is okay. If we want to keep players playing for long, probably we don't want interstitials, but. Yeah, I mean, we haven't. Yeah. We didn't think about it too much. We just said, okay, let's let's first try rewarded only, and if we break even, then we just then we break even, and, and that's what happened. Nice, cool. Just yeah, stay there. yeah, maybe you, so, will, you will add some interstitials along the way in the future. Though there is a lot of low hanging fruits. I mean, don't yeah. get don't don't get me wrong. Definitely a lot of opportunities to sort of 
user segment and, and show uh, uh, users that aren't watching any rewarded or aren't making any in-app purchases, some interstitials or even banners mm -hmm. later on. But yeah, I mean, the team is small. We want to sort of like focus on, on the big wins and, and it makes like the biggest yeah, impact, not, right? Yeah. Yeah, although you could argue that user segmentation also has a big impact, but we'll we see. We, we, we're not, we don't, our live, op, our live operation, so Lesmore is a new games company, right? We're good yeah. at building new games, building innovative moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. This is, this is what we are good at. And so publishing operations yeah. is still very dirty, right? We're still trying to sort of like be more sophisticated, professionalize on that front, but... But, but yeah. you, you, you don't learn, want to get too distracted. Yeah, you learn as you go. Like that's that's the beauty part of the exactly. game development. So exactly. there's no segmentations here, even for rewarded. Like uh, if you're a user in Malaysia, you still see the same amount of rewarded opportunities compared to the US. Uh, most most yeah, probably, yes. I, guess. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't know that you, you, you should use a segment based on country, but no, we, we don't. Oh, you can, in different ways you can do it, right? But yeah, there's plenty of ways to do it. That's one of the ways you can also base it on, yeah, how many like ads they watched historically and then show the ones that only watch ads without making IEPs more rewarded so, ad <clears throat> placements. You, you know, you know, uh, he's pitching himself because you already said he worked with Jakub, so I was like, oh, well, maybe you will. You... <laughs> go for the Michael Bublé double. <laughs> anyway, let's... <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's go for the estimations here because this game is an ad yeah. juggernaut uh active user base on sensor tower is eight hundred and thirty thousand dow in the last 30 days iap revenue like we said over a million i think the ad viewer rates for the reward ads is 79 percent uh why do i think that because that's the highest i've ever seen and i think this is probably around the same level so just about 80% of users that play this game, I would say, probably watch a rewarded ad. So your uh, guess it's your guess it's 79% because 79% is the highest that you've I've ever seen. I've never seen anything higher than that uh, from any ad monetization like, <laughs> game I've managed in the last... But that's, that's what you're basing it off of. I've never seen higher, because... but I think it's the highest. Like this thing, I've never seen a higher for some reason. So yeah, it's the highest. It's, it's 81%. <laughs> mm. So close. Mm. Very yeah, close. Not bad, uh, Felix. Not close. bad. Uh, all right, cool. All right, so I've never seen pretty much <laughs> a rewarded imp thou higher than 19, but I would say that's a bit too high for this. So I probably think it's around 14 or 15, meaning that currently this game would make about 150K a day in ad revenue or 73% of total revenue. However, this oh. game has something called IAPs as well, right? So we need to handicap the ECPM at jack that ECPM level up because when you have a lot of IAPs, that means you get more buying from the big studios, which means that your ECPM goes up. So if I adjust the ECPM levels to, let's say, 42 in the States and 18 worldwide, which probably makes some more sense, I think this game makes about... Two hundred, two hundred and ten thousand dollars a day currently in ad revenue, which means that that is about seventy-five to eighty percent of this game's revenue is ad revenue. And there is pause. <laughs> there is pause. Um, don't worry, you don't need to just blink twice if he's right, or just once if he's like totally wrong. Because we had this uh, discussion when we discussed, I think, Legend of Slime. He was like, "Oh my god, this is so amazing! Like seventy percent ads." 30% IIPs. And then I was talking to the team and it's like, oh man, it's like the other way around actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think uh, I'm just, wrong this I'm time. Just, I don't think I'm wrong I, this time. I'm just going to say that it's a really good guess. That's what I'm going to say. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> a really good that's guess. good because if it was wrong, then it would be like, yeah. Nice. <laughs> In that, in that case, oh my God, like my estimations on spend are going to be very interesting as well. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh. It's just it's quite incredible. Like this is an absolute ad juggernaut. And what makes it so good is the fact that you also have IAPs. So for those who don't know, that means you get higher ECPMs from all the SDK networks. So if SDK network sees a large user base of people that make purchases, they will notice that and they will bid higher for that audience because it shows a willingness to purchase. So that means that player ranks, uh, Royal Match, all these guys will start spending quite heavily to get access and to I these users. And I see Sea of yeah. Conquest all the fucking time. Just like I guess, yeah, like, like new... Sea of Conquest and Top Heroes, I see all the time. Top Heroes, and then World of uh, no, uh, World of Tanks, Blitz, like these free games all day long, all day long, on repeat. Yeah. Oh, which are but, definitely yeah. IIP based games. 
Did you guys plan any of this? Or like, how do you manage your admin? Like, did you, like, it's just, <laughs> it's so big. It's so big for one title. What, what do you mean plan? Like, like what do you yeah. mean? Just for context, like one of the biggest publishers, like on a good day, like a voodoo, sometimes they make a million a day, right? So one title that you guys have is like 20% of one of the biggest publishers in the world across a whole portfolio. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's probably luck, right? I mean, it, most of it is luck, so. But yeah, no, it, it, we, we just focus on, we just focus on good games and we believe that everything else will follow. Yeah. You have skills, Jakob. Yeah, I see. Finally, I something right. Yeah, yeah Jakob's, Jakob's uh, feedback carried. We are worried. Uh, you can ask, <laughs> ask Jakob. Cool. Nice. Very good. All right, Mati, we want to hear. Jakob is loving this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Matty, we want to hear your uh, UA predictions that are already off by a factor of two. No, it's not. They're not off, actually. By the way, so, sorry. Yeah. Do I get no. this right? These are the events here. Like, I have the latest build then. No, you don't. Yeah, but the latest one unlocks in timeline four, uh, three. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you okay. don't have the latest build because you don't have the speed button yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, right. So I was yeah, like, right. you just stop. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking around. <laughs> Ah, it's fine. <clears throat> now, I was actually, actually, you can play. I was just uh, kind of mm -hmm. looking through the some sensor tower data because I was looking into uh, the split by like paid versus organic. And it says like it's 30% organic downloads and then 60% uh, paid, which kind of makes sense. Uh, and also from the discussion we had uh, in, uh, in London for PGC. And I was also looking into like different like session durations and session counts as well and says like average sessions like five every ses sessions per day which is interesting number it's quite high i think like Jakub, you you said that even it's like super size kind of trying to get five six sessions per day yep. that's just the rumor i heard that yeah that's, just that's to like balance benchmark. just to balance like the retention and then just kind of split the sessions into smaller sessions or shorter sessions than during the day which guy's kind of like okay interesting <clears throat> but it says it's like more than like one or one minute or three minutes long sessions. And uh, if I'm kind of thinking about like how I played, it was more like, yeah, four sessions, five sessions per day, few battles, and then uh, watched few ads and then, <laughs> then just disappeared. <clears throat> and then waited to the next day just to get the two, uh, two meet uh, placements. But anyway, <clears throat> let me share this first. Um, which is uh, Jakub, if you can fuck off from the sharing, <laughs> thank you. That would be amazing. Because then we have all well, this is we have the downloads here. <clears throat> so this is interesting. So when I was looking at downloads, so you have already like ten million downloads. Jesus Christ, it's amazing. I mean, you have that's, 20. that's entire Sweden. Like that's that's my country. Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's two like times my country. <laughs> yeah, to, twice Slovakia. <laughs> But uh, yeah, US obviously the biggest one. But then there's South Korea, which is, I mean, it makes sense uh, in for this type of game. And then we have Germany, UK, France, Canada, Australia, <clears throat> and then the rest. And it's South still Korea kind of only uh, South Korea only because um, uh, Adventure was cloned. Our, our biggest Adventure clone is a South Korean game. So this Ooh. time we said let's. Let's, uh, let's go big in you know, South let's, Korea. Let's go nice. in South Korea. That's <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I don't even know if South Korea is profitable, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> engines. Uh, oh, my that, God. That again. Jeez, <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. So it looks like it's like half like yeah, half a million uh, downloads and all like three hundred well two hundred thousand IIPs and I'm pretty sure that this is way bigger. Uh like uh, Felix mentioned. Uh but then uh what's interesting is actually the like fifty fifty kind of split on the uh well not revenues but downloads at least. Here it says you're bigger on Android than iOS. That's that's surprising, to be honest. I'm not sure like why, but I would say I would kind of think this works quite well on iOS as well. I mean, now it's kind of even, but it was more on Android rather than just uh, uh, iOS. It's just like an interesting fact. But what's most interesting is kind of uh, the creative. That's not true, by the way. It's, it, no. it installs bigger on Android. 
or revenue big on, on Android? Revenue big on Android, and then we all know we have downloads free. Yeah, well, downloads are like three point two million for January and uh, for Android, and then one point six million on iOS. No, that's that's not true. Okay, on iOS, iOS is big. Okay, so it's okay. Sadness multiplier on on downloads as well. Good to know. Yeah, because I was like, okay, man, like this is. 100% working really well. Oh, for the downloads, iOS. I'm not sure. But for <clears throat> revenue, iOS yeah. is higher than Android. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah that makes sense. That makes total sense. Uh, and I was looking into uh, into the all kind of networks in here. I mean, there are like some, some bullshit networks. You're 100% obviously. mediating on Max, right? Max, like, oh my I, God. I, I smell that a mile yes. away when you see the ads, right? It's 100% Max. But yeah, it's like yeah, like I, I looked at the, the 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 biggest network is guess what? Apple, I mean, all all the <laughs> the list is just surprise, Apple surprise. there. Yeah, surprise, surprise. I mean, it makes all the sense because of the well ads ROAS and then IIP ROAS. And if you're running blended ROAS and then I some IIP campaigns as well, like it's like it's a no brainer. And then and we're using their mediation, so they have all the data. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So that was like. Do you have Adam's great. Uh, WhatsApp? <laughs> not yet, <laughs> not yet, not yet. But you know, if if, if they're gonna grow like this <clears throat> as you go, then hundred percent. Like, hello, come, come. Well, I'm pretty sure you got the uh, the invite to to Dubai event or what? Like, what what Arzani mentioned? Like, there is this like top secret Dubai event for like few companies <clears throat> that they're kind of growing. But oh. anyway. No, oh, oh, no. then, no, then no. You, you, yeah. Now, now we're upset. Yeah, now, now, we're yeah, now, now we're we keep wondering why Applovin won't let, like, the communications team at Applovin won't let anyone from Applovin come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is now, it? Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we've invited them four times, and yeah, every time it never uh, works. <laughs> well, may, maybe because you, you pissed them out like where when we were starting like a year and a half ago. So also, you know. also they said we swear too much. Apparently, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Shit. Maybe I mean, think about it. It's, it's very true. Anyway. Really, I would have thought Uploven would be fine with profanity. Like... Yeah, if you look at the, all the end, uh, all the end cards and the, the ads you show in the game. But I was I, I literally saw like so many like, Unity kind of ads. I very few very few Uploven kind of end cards. So I was I was really confused. <clears throat> if it's level play, but uh, or max. Oh, yeah, but, then... but shout out, shout out to Applevin, by the way. Of course, like they're yeah. very good friends, so friends of ours. Very good some, friends, some, yeah. yeah, some people also ask like how, much, <laughs> yeah, how much money we we get from Applevin just to say good things about them, and it's like, well, if if it works, it works. <laughs> it's, like, it's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy. But anyway. Uh, so we had like all the channels, like, like everything. Uh, like if you if you make yeah, like uh, Felix mentioned, like two hundred fifty ish uh, a day, then yes, you need a lot of money to uh, well, a lot of UI channels to to spend uh, some money on to get uh, that money that money back. But I'm just thinking about <clears throat> like what is the like actual payback period because the day night is quite strong. And you and we see like big growth in terms of the revenues as well. So I would I would assume like you are kind of front loaded a lot of spend and then maybe just decreased something. But if I need to guess, I would guess you are spending something around like 150k per day ish. Maybe on some days closer to 200. But let's yeah. Do you you don't need to comment on that? But it's like the thing. What I'm trying to think about is the payback period. If it's like 90 days or if, if it's longer than that or if it's actually shorter because if the retention profile look like this, then I would say maybe 90 days, maybe 60 days now because the numbers are looking better from the from the start. And even maybe the golden cohort looks like 45-ish kind of. But I mean, what do I know? Like that's my guess. That's my assumption. Are you a, you a spend your pretty close break even your way off okay it's shorter it... i don't know <laughs> <laughs> could be, could would, be it take, would it take longer for mache's voice to heal than for you guys to get paid back <laughs> or would it take shorter time i mean in the beginning in the beginning it was in I mean, well the thing is it's golden cohorts right now right? yeah so yeah, it's yeah. still slowly being pushed back but if it's not if it's not uh, 90 days, then it's 
definitely not 180 days, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I'm yeah, saying. no, 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 of course, of course. It'll be, I mean, quite long, but still, <clears throat> you need to get that money back so you can actually spend it. And then uh, you're waiting like 45 days to get that money from uh, iOS and then Google. So, okay. But okay. Ad revenue sense. pays back quicker, though, mate. You got to remember that 30 days, usually, especially at this scale, they're getting Mobile paid back 60? in 30 days. Oh, okay. 30 oh. days. All right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. But uh, okay then, uh, in terms of the creatives, this is brilliant. And I, I will show you the, um, the PGC kind of slides that we had because there are some, some interesting creatives. You can talk about it. But this is, it is the kind of dungeon you were talking about, right? This is, yep. I love it. Oops. Minus the plane. The plane is fake. <laughs> Obviously. Which is, I mean, it could be love. real. It could be <laughs> real. Right? Could be real. Yeah. yeah, we could add it. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Easy to add, but that's fake. There you go. Like, I. This is very, very. I'm, I'm going to repeat myself because uh, the, you were not the, the PGC um, discussion. I love these like one versus hundreds of of. Uh, uh, of four years because this is exactly the same here, right? Just one versus like, that's real, of... that's 100% real, that's in the game. Well, and it's yeah. like the, the spawn like, you know... rate, probably not that real, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, like so. Again, we are coming back to altered gameplay, <laughs> altered gameplay, yeah. <laughs> altered, but like, this is great because you have all these like different uh, uh hooks as well, and uh. One sec. That's just the usual. That's <laughs> so brutal. <laughs> Clear. For those who are just listening, it's just a bunch of soldiers shooting a bunch of Stone Age people. <laughs> yeah, Most seriously. Like, with clubs. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Like it's, no like, it's perfect. Like I, I love this. It's, it's amazing. And like you have all these like different kind of variations. And obviously, I see this, this kind of South Korean, right? So. <laughs> No. I mean, uh, South Korean. It's not South Korean. It's not Korean. Okay. It is. It is South Korean. Okay. Okay. Good. Like... I need to turn that down. Okay. So, <clears throat> what do we have here? I think the most interesting part is uh, well, I know this is wrong, uh, and because when I was looking into this, oh, I was looking into this yesterday, and it's like one kind of one. Creative or yeah, this one, <laughs> which is something Modern that we already show. Stone Age. But we have the TikTok voice. Mm. At least, I mean, I, this is quite slow, honestly. But what do I know? And again, the same thing. But if we look at the, the January over, over here, then we have a like, few different, uh, different things. And uh, we actually had this uh, discussion uh, about TikTok. Uh, like launching games on TikTok exclusively, right? So ah, maybe maybe you can you can talk about that a little bit. Uh, Sam, Who's like what guy? was the? <laughs> TikTok creative challenge. Uh, we told them. We, we we told we told TikTok what, we, what versus... I just told you that we wanted to scale on South Korea and Japan aggressively. Yeah. So they said, hey, let, let us localize your creatives. And then they localize nice. our creatives. Because this is usually like the TikTok creative challenge is used in the uh, uh, US mainly. And I, when we were, look, we were looking into Visa, well, what was it like? Doodle Magic, Wizard vs. Slime. It was only in the uh, in US. Dude, even though, mute yeah. that, please. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, the, the video is a bit too too is louder than your voice. Yeah, as usual, as usual. Oh, I don't see nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's like a month ago. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It is perfect. And like, yeah, this look... is really altered gameplay because you have people. Yeah, also yeah people standing from the next. Side yeah. <laughs> 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 it's it's huh? perfect. I love this. It's... Sorry, I have a rookie admon question. How much yeah. budget do you have to have before TikTok or any other company starts making you localize a, localize creatives? Like, that's a very rookie question. Yeah. Those, yeah. No you idea. Know. So we, um, we, we thought they they provided that support. Everywhere, exactly. But... No, it's it's actually exactly like that. So you, this is these are um, TikTok creative challenge videos. So you basically, I mean, it's 
most probably this Korean uh, uh, version is in beta or you need to have uh, a connections in TikTok. But if you said like, look, you want to really scale in uh, in Japan and South Korea, then uh, they kind of found these <clears throat> these different uh, creators. But it's it's kind of now open to everybody and you can just join the TikTok Creative Challenge. You just put in, like a brief in what you want to see. Uh, you can go wild uh, and say, look, do whatever you want. And uh, it's just five, 10 or 20 new videos per week you can get from TikTok Creative Challenge. Do I get that right that these people, like the TikTok influencers, whatever, yes, those are they TikTok are pretty creators. much yes. just yes. creative real. agencies? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, no, not uh, real. It's like... a full-time job to just make games creatives? Mm, not games creative. It's just like they're big on TikTok. So they're like, let's call it creators or the influencers, <laughs> whatever you just said. This is just like, you know, they're getting extra money to actually produce these creatives. Mm. Even we could do that if we were big in, uh, on TikTok, which okay. all, we are almost there. <laughs> well, our six followers on TikTok? And I'll just 400 something, which is, uh, I mean, it's not six. It's yeah, we're fine. getting there. No worries. We're getting there. Yeah, don't worry. We're getting there for sure. I mean, uh, and then we have the good old kind of first uh, meta yes, here. So I saw a few. I mean, these are these. We saw these. Uh, we saw all of these as well. And then it's pretty, pretty kind of a let's say true. Like not that much fakeness. I mean, it's yeah, it's just altered. That's it. Yeah, I wouldn't mm. even say altered. Most of this is just pretty much right taken from the game. That's, yeah, like, like, there's maybe an airplane icon or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, I like the yeah, the the pace of the of please the base. mute that much. Please mute that. Yeah, fuck. Why? <laughs> I mean, come Super on. Loud. Because I, I guess the sound is not going into your earphones. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is, it is. It is, it is. It is. It is. It's just, <laughs> my volume is quite, quite low. Can such a teenager today? Are you such a teenager today? Again, Spartans. you can We're hear the, the kind of TikTok voice. Uh, yeah. Which is AI? nice. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. So how big is your creative team, Sam, if you can, if you can say that? Now to try yourself. Uh, three. Three. <laughs> Fuck, okay. And I also help. Sometimes I make creative sometimes as well. Okay. Man, like for that kind of spend, that's that's an interesting number <laughs> to be Very honest. Least. That's less more. That's more, baby. <laughs> yes, okay. Less is more, baby. Nice. All right, all right. It sounds Fair like enough. exactly the same philosophy as small giant games uh, when they got started, right? You used to get a really good team together and then oh, yeah. it's... But you do, you do work less with... with more. Yeah, do you work with a lot of external uh, partners as well? Or yes, okay, there you go. Okay, nice. Oh, that's I mean, <laughs> fair. That's fair, and it, I, I like this. Oh, oops, sorry. I really love this. It's like the same thing all over again. Just the just whole different. philosophy yeah, is just being thrown person. out the window. <laughs> <laughs> less <laughs> more, less with more consultants. Yeah, yeah that is, exactly. That makes sense. <laughs> that's all. That's all. You work with consultants? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that's the sound oh, bite no, <laughs> but and look 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 so i will take like all of these and and you will see immediately okay so it's up loving then something some unity over here but like basically everything is up loving since like mid january which i think it's like the exactly the time when you started scaling right yes okay <laughs> okay fair so we started anyway. scaling we started scaling late november beginning of december but with up loving it was starting january Okay. 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 And then there was this explosive growth kind of, uh, that's what we, we saw at least. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you have playables, which is great. And like multiple of them, it actually makes sense because, uh, everything, uh, yeah, is working nicely. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is great. I might kind of, maybe when we kind of discuss this would call a, like lack of creative depth a little bit so it's like the, all these like concepts look exactly the same but uh i mean if you think about the whole team structure and everything it kind of makes sense but there is also like this important thing that i wanted to show you which is connected to our actually panel discussion so i'm gonna stop sharing this and then stop sharing but isn't this still working like I guess like how it should? Because you know, Look. even though hyper casual is that, we still need to preserve the hyper casual creatives. You yes, know, look, I mean, feel, CPI, low cost, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, 
all of these, like, I mean, we saw this, right? But these are some numbers that we showed on the um, on the screen, which is like downloads, organic downloads. So can you talk a little bit more about this, like organic downloads? Because I think that's what you mentioned on the PGC kind of panel discussion. That was really, really interesting. Um, that was the exclusive launch with, with TikTok. And with TikTok, um, because they're good at getting a lot of, uh, a lot of users talking about your game quickly, especially when you grow aggressively because, you know, people will start to comment on creatives and there's a discussion and, and you know, people start to share. There was a huge uh, organic uplift in the beginning. And then as soon as we exited out of the exclusive and, and went with all the other networks to that level, we found that we saw another huge explosion in growth, so. But uh, but that's not true anymore. It's not it's not fifty percent split anymore. Yeah, organics and paid. Yeah, the, yeah. I think I saw like the thirty percent organics and then like seventy percent. It's it's kind of paid. Yeah, I think this is the, exactly the point I was saying at the beginning that it, it perfectly plays into the philosophy of like the game being very hard, like similar yeah. to Flappy Bird and everybody yeah, yeah, exactly. trying to you know try their own luck at it because like if it's so hard, like why you know why shouldn't I try it? Rather than being kind of more smoother in the beginning, it's kind of, you know, just another average game, which helps you differentiate from all the other games currently in the crowd. Yeah, yeah then we have That's the idea, more. at least on paper, but we also didn't run any A-B tests on, on the difficulty, which we we're, which were planning on doing. So mm. that's, that's, that's the number one feedback we're getting, that, oh, it's too slow, and the majority of one stars and two stars on on the app stores. So you blindfolded yourself, system. shot an arrow, and hit a bullseye. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> With it. I love it. Honestly, I love like, it. It's, per it's perfect. Oh, seriously. Try like, some kudos. segmentation. Uh, that's all I can say from Admon. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would yes, say that's like continue with the like iteration speed that you you're getting like with that what you said that eighty twenty like think like it's kind of yeah you see it and like with, in hybrids like I wouldn't go even like whatever get bogged down into this like fine tuning optimization something something like for now I would say like more content is needed but again eighty twenty is like the way to go you, you've proven it like two times already now with two games so that was the hardest point I guess kudos to that. Yeah, I love the mass battles kind of one versus hordes uh, videos. Those are my favorite. And if you then like kind of build it around some like funny situations or humor, that's even like like gonna double down on the the good great numbers and like decrease the CPI even more. And like I like I really like the the whole the art style and how it looks like. It's really sim simplified stuff and st like that exactly that's what works. Kind of the only thing I would kind of which I think would work better is just low poly, <laughs> but, but this is amazing. This is perfect. Low poly 3D, you mean? Yeah. You could try that in, in the creatives, actually. Uh, we saw a few, we saw few games that are actually not low poly, but they are using, low poly creatives. They have low poly creatives, yeah. <laughs> Any oh, any comments? Show. Yeah. Any comments? Yeah. Where, where are you guys usually rate? Where where are the ratings? Oh man, oh, there ratings. you go. Oh, oh, you're you're yeah. a listener. You abandoned the, you are, yeah. You abandon the ratings or what? No, 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 we can no. do the ratings. Oh, no. It was like you can go with your comments first, and then then we can then we go. Yeah, then we, go, then we <laughs> then we rate. As, as always, I mean, great insights. It's really nice to um, see pros like you guys analyze the game, especially live. This is also why I was smiling throughout the whole nice. podcast. It wasn't because you guys were saying wrong things. It was just I was enjoying it. It was nice and I was learning a lot. Um, yeah, and thanks, thanks for having us. Trying to yeah. get those tents. Trying to get those tents. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me start the chopping block. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, just so... be careful because you are now maybe trying to shoot yourself in the foot. So <laughs> yeah, no. You designed it. You designed it, bro. You designed it. I, didn't, I didn't know bribery would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so my guess is like I would uh, like overall I would say eight out of ten, and why eight and not ten or like what are the the things that I would do is that 
I would do a little bit more robust economy, which my guess is not done there because robust economy means more content to kind of put that economy on, which the team is because it's small, like it's less is more. So I guess it's kind of coming and because of just the iteration process of it, but I would definitely kind of enlarge it a little bit and speed up the progression. Like, yeah, it's definitely worth an A-B test. The easiest A-B test, I think, is ad placement for the meat four uh, times a day not even a, of two. A, yeah. not even uh, an ad placement what i would do is like try different uh, timelines of feature unfolding so let's say for instance the skills and like the things that you have there like later down the line my guess is that just like few percent of users ever saw them so probably try like an a b test that kind of speeds up the progression a little bit because usually how this works is that you kind of get your new toy you play with your new toy then your attention budget again stabilizes because you don't you know learn to play with it and then you throw in another toy and like here's your new feature play with it again and then you know how survivor io does it for instance or like these other hybrid oh, candy kind of even candy crush like introduces yeah, 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 like, like new just boosters like speeding up the progression a little bit because my guess is that the i've seen it all moment kind of comes too fast where like there are still features, don't get me wrong. It's just they're kind of so so locked away behind like the progression. So I would kind of speed it up. And then again, yeah, I know Sam, you said exactly like the opposite opinion, but I would still slap some offers on on top of this, like like gacha, whatever, something something starter pack progression, timeline progression offers. Just like slap progression offers when you move from timeline to timeline. So like you achieve this offer because it's just like progression offer and then bam put it there that that's like my have you seen here. have you seen uplifts with offers before oh that of was course. like battle legion was like all offers <laughs> basically 90 yeah, yeah, percent of yeah, the yeah. revenue was offers definitely <laughs> like uh i know in, no, uplifts, in... uplifts i mean oh, uplift. Uplift. Uh, uplift oh yeah, yeah. i've seen so yeah yeah definitely. <laughs> but don't overshoot the discount percentages like uh you know Everybody can do like big revenue spikes and then comes hangover from baseline revenue. So you can actually okay. losing in the in the process. So make sure that like the offers are balanced around not going away from 120 to like 182 thousand percent kind of discount. Otherwise, then you're <laughs> underselling your economy too cheap. Okay. Nice. That's there. Uh Man, Admon, I'm going to sound like such a little fucking blonde bitch, but uh, <laughs> 7 out of 10, uh, purely mm. for the reason like the ad placements are great. Uh, the game is making a lot of ad revenue. Uh, it's hard to say for a game that makes, you know, nearly uh, a quarter of a mil a day in ad revenue. But uh, this day and age, I don't think there is like any room not to do segmentation. So basically treating your user base in a uniform way is kind of gone. Uh how I would start testing this is just enabling some user bases that have passed the point where most of the IAPs take place. They are allowed to watch uh, two more, three more like uh, rewarded ad placements for meat, basically increasing the ad load for people that you know will never make an IAP, uh, starting experimenting around that. I've seen it work and yeah, there's easy ways of doing it as hard ways. Alien Invasion, how they do it to increase, encourage uh, views is that uh, once a user doesn't purchase something, basically they increase the amount of rewards between the rewarded placements. So if you don't interact with three rewarded placements in a row, they increase the amount of things you're getting out of the rewarded placements, for example. But yeah, there's a lot of things you can do around it if you think about it, but like it's still a juggernaut, right? So <laughs> yeah. Or you said, you said that there's a lot of things. So if you could boil it down to one thing, let's say the, the one thing that does the, does the, you're you're on this game and and what would you say is the 80 20 of user segmentation what's the first thing that you would try what's the biggest uplift that you would uh, you that... so w what time like how far in the game do people make their first purchase like on average like when is the first purchase well they ever pick a number okay yeah. let's say let's say let's say it's day 14 right so it makes no sense that the ad load for users that are stuck around until day 28 uh have the same amount of reward in a, like uh, placements as they do before that place so it mm. makes more sense to allow them that have clearly said they're not ever going to make a purchase to allow them to watch more ads because they are more ah, yeah, so what's susceptible to watch more ads yeah find like 95 percent you know cutoff of like all the purchases are down from this point on and then the rest is getting, going to get segmented yeah. so i have a mm. client for example like uh, they segment users they never show and rewarded ad placements until day 28 but then after that, big average uh, input yeah. of seven-ish. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So basically find the point where 
you would expect the player to make a purchase. And if they don't make a purchase, then start showing ads a few days later. Yeah. Set, set a rule like yeah. I'm willing to lose maximum 2% of IAPs to test out this or to try to make it happen. And then you pick that point and then that's your yeah. Yeah, North that, Star that's metric. That's a point where you pretty much like decide that like, okay, there's no other way to get to get any other revenue kind of mm. from this user so the only thing i would say don't do this is if you have heavy social features which you don't have yeah so you know there, there's like your there's your warranty there like yeah. you don't really need to care then well but, you know 200k a day with a you know uh <laughs> with seven out of ten is not bad <laughs> that's pretty good no. I, I was expecting way higher i would say nine for sure i mean like uh given the the whole kind of team structure like how big is the team and i know we know yuri and begum as well and it's like like that's kind of spent per day it's just like amazing it's yeah, really like a great job man. yeah like less more you, you awesome. yeah you said it that's like like heads off serious like that's really really like senior kind of approach to, to the ua i for this kind of budget i would expect way more creatives in a different kind of angles uh but it's just like I'm pretty sure you're on top of it already. And uh, most probably uh, focus more on playables than videos. Uh, because if you, yeah, if Applavin is the top spender, which is apparently, and I would say 70, maybe, yeah, 70% of the whole spend is going to Applavin, then you need like new playables almost every two or three weeks. That's like, that's definitely needed. But except that, oh my god, fucking amazing. Like, really, really good job. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, like, uh, literally, the games, like, for me, game design-wise, is a representation. That's what you said. Like, less is more. Like, literally, yeah. you have this, like, small thing that's making so much power. <laughs> awesome. Can, nice. can I rate you guys now? Yes, sure, you can. Sure, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Long bitch. <laughs> yeah, Maven yeah, teenager. Long, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Felix, I'm giving you a one out. Yeah, but, less is, but, hey, but less is more, so he's really giving me a compliment. Guys. <laughs> nice wow, okay, very cool. That's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, no. Yeah, yeah, you can you can rate us if we never had that before. So. 10 out of 10, of course. 10 nice. out of 10 every single day. Nice. No, In thanks. podcasting skills, analytical skills, yeah. humor, looks. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, poop breaks, everything. Yeah. yeah. All good. Yeah. All good. All good. Backgrounds, backgrounds. Yeah. Maybe Mate, maybe you're a nine out of ten, but, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. All the yeah, all the kids' toys need to be in the background. That's that's how it works. No. And Sam, thanks uh, Jacob's, for coming. Jacob's really. background looks like uh IKEA. It's true. And we oh my god, oh, where's the where's the fake uh Christmas, Christmas tree? tree? Yeah, where's the fake yeah. Christmas tree? <laughs> Are any of the plants real on that table? Oh, it's uh, all fake. It's all fake. Oh yeah, they're real. They're, there's like there's the Valentine's bouquet I give my wife I'm right there. Oh, <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> okay, I think that's all right. Let's end it before my teeth yeah, for yeah, all the yeah, sugar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Oh, teeth oh, rotting. Geez, all right. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god yeah thank you very much for coming Sam. yeah thanks really for great. coming thanks, uh, guys thank you very much for listening uh, uh please subscribe hit the button so as many as you subscribe my voice is gonna be back sooner so please do, <laughs> do subscribe and then share comment on youtube and uh yeah see you next yeah, time see you soon in istanbul definitely oh yeah well uh <laughs> that's true one one thing we are actually coming to istanbul there's gonna be a google event on 7th but there's gonna be a super secret two and a half gamers event on 6th so please be you know join our slack and then uh be patient we will share some news very soon ciao thank ciao. you ciao.